Hey everyone, Axel here from Axel Zulie Entertainment presenting another episode of Timelines and Theories where today we'll be theorizing about popular MMOs, The Crafting Dead, episode 57 through 61. We've got quite a lot to review today because I had my one year anniversary of my channel so I couldn't do it last week. So let's get right into reviewing all of these episodes. Now today we're going to be starting with episode 57, Herobrine's Brutal Attack Mission. So for those who haven't been keeping up with the series in a while, just to recap, in the last episode, Pat and Jin were sent off by Herobrine using a clone army to destroy a small village, which is pretty sad. The reason they were doing that is because they're double agents currently working for Herobrine to infiltrate Herobrine and destroy him from the inside. But we start off this episode with them returning from them destroying the village with the clones. And they're like, okay, we're really kissing up to Herobrine. He's not even figuring us out. We've totally tricked him. And they go up and Herobrine's like, oh, by the way, I've known that you're working against me the entire time. <laughs> I have sent the clones to destroy your friends. <laughs> And Pat and Jen are completely freaked out. They're like, wait, you knew that we were double-crossing you the whole time? And apparently, yes, he did. And this was pretty bad, I must say. Pat and Jen know they have to get back to their base to stop the clone army. But first, they talk to Lenny. And Lenny reveals that the whole time, there has been a traitor among their ranks who's been feeding Hero Brian this information. Pat and Jen do not have any idea who the traitor is, but they want to find out. And so they quickly rush back to their base, and all the clones are there destroying their entire base, and they have to fight them. Bob and Carter are fighting the clones on foot. Chad and Chewie are hidden down their underground bunker. Boulder and the mayor are on top of the jail, and everyone else is hidden in the jail, hiding from the clones. Eventually, Pat and Jen are able to defeat every single clone, saving the day. And they're really triumphant about that. The Hero Brian clone drops diamond armor for them, and they're really happy about that because diamond armor is awesome. Upon further investigation, they discover that the Herobrine clone has also dropped a map. Upon decoding this map, they discover it's an entire map of the surrounding area, and they know they can get into Herobrine's base this way. After talking with everybody in the base, they decide that in the next episode, it's time for them to destroy Herobrine once and for all. To add confidence to Panjin's plan, the whole gang reveals that the whole time that Panjin has been working for Herobrine, they've been training in their warfare, so they are ready to take Herobrine down. As the whole team rejoices in their plan to defeat Herobrine, the episode ends, bringing us to the next episode. Now it's time for episode 58, The Hospital Missing. This episode starts off with Pat and Jin preparing to destroy Herobrine. They are late to the fight. Everybody has left except Evil Jin. She says she won't go because it's a suicide mission. There's no beating Herobrine. But Pat and Jin don't believe her, so they go on. They get to the secret entrance, but standing right at the secret entrance, they see Lenny. Dun dun dun! Lenny then reveals that the traitor uh, warned Herobrine and Lenny of the attack. So his friends were all captured. All the friends, all the cast except Evil Jin have been captured. And Pat and Jin are really worried. So they go in and they try to fight Herobrine. Herobrine promptly defeats them, knocking them out cold. When they wake up, they wake up in a hospital way far away from their base up to a doctor named Dr. Pain. Oh yeah! He then explains to Pat and Jin that they were knocked out by Herobrine and that the leader of the base brought them back here to be rehabilitated in the hospital. They are then greeted by a cook in the city named Ali. And that's pretty much all for the new characters we get in this episode, Dr. Payne and Ali. There's a few village guards, but they aren't very important. None of them talk or anything. And they go around. The entire rest of the gang's there. They're all okay. Even Bombi's returned after a few months, which is really awesome. I really enjoy Bombi. So they go talking around some, and they realize a few more things. F first thing they realize, this is the same city that they destroyed with the clones. Because in the episode where Herobrine commanded them to destroy that settlement with the clones, the people in the settlement said that most of the settlement had moved away and that there are just people remaining there when they were destroyed. So these are the people whose village Pat and Zinn destroyed while working for Herobrine, which they're like, oh, uh-oh, we didn't do very good, did we? They also realized that the commander of this base is a captain, and the captain saved every single one of them there. I'm just going to put this in right now. The second I heard the word captain... Two words flashed in my head. I thought to myself, 
Captain Cookie. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know who Captain Cookie is, Captain Cookie is a character from popular MMO's Epic Proportions Season 8. Captain Cookie was a character who was a very extravagant and borderline psychotic captain who saved Pat and Jen from a sinking ship in the very first episode. Well, more they saved him. It's kind of half and half. He was always pretty crazy and stuff, and he was one of the most favorite characters that popular MMOs ever came up with. So it would be really cool if he came back into the series. But the third thing that they learned is probably the most important. Jellybean is currently in a coma because of the fight. Nobody knows how to get him out of the coma, and Dr. Payne has tried quite a lot. The only answer they have is that the captain, who has left the base recently, is going on a quest to find a cure for Jelly Bean's coma. And finally, Evil Jen and whereabouts are unknown. Ever since the fight, she has been missing. Nobody knows if she's back at the base or where she is. She hasn't reported to the hospital yet, so it's quite unknown where she could be. And with that, there's nothing really else that happens in the episode. That's all the important stuff. So, that ends up episode 58. This brings us to episode 59, the helicopter mission. So, we get to see the fact that Bob and Bombi are living together, and they're starting to build a house because the hospital that they live in is way too crowded. But the thing is, Bombi is really hungry. They've never fed him throughout the series, so he's quite, quite hungry. And unfortunately, the hospital has no food, despite Allie being a cook. This is because, according to the Sky's Man, Honey Boo Boo's been eating all the food because she is a stress eater, and Jelly Bean has been in a coma, which is really stressing her out. Other developments that have happened in the village is that it is revealed that Lenny has been captured and imprisoned in the base in a jail cell by the captain, and Boulder is starting to think, where, uh, maybe I should take over because this captain guy hasn't gotten back yet. The people of the village, the residents, are worried because the captain should have been back two days ago according to his plans. So Pat and Jen decide to go out to find more food for Bombi and to find the captain. They go on adventure for quite a while, going through several structures, finding tad bits of food and stuff, mostly cans. They eventually come upon a helicopter, hence the name of the episode, where they find the leader of the area. And it turns out, why, why yes it is, Captain Cookie. Hooray! I've been missing Captain Cookie for such a long time. He's one of the greatest characters popular MMOs has ever come up with. And it's really great to see him back to the series. So... Captain Cookie, being kind of psychotic as he is, he says he's looking out for food for Bombi. Well, he's looking for food, and if you give him food, he'll give you gunpowder to feed Bombi. And he forgot the other reason he was out here, which is to find a cure for Jelly Bean. So that's Captain Cookie being kind of stupid, kind of psychopathic. And he also remarks that he has no idea who they are, but they look like some people really familiar that he saved and fed and trained, even though really it was Pat and Jen who really saved and fed and trained Captain Cookie. So, yeah, that's pretty weird. Pat and Jen then give Captain Cookie all of their food in order to get gunpowder to feed Bombi, and Captain Cookie remarks that he'll see them back in the base later. So they return to the base and feed Bombi a lot of food, giving him a lot of extra hearts, making him pretty happy. And that's how the episode ends with Pattinson still worried about how they are going to save Jelly Bean from this coma. And they're pondering a way how to do it. But the good thing is, Captain Cookie is back. This brings us into episode 60, The Mad Doctor Missing. In this episode, Pat and Jen are trying to find a cure for Jelly Bean still because he's still in his horrible, horrible coma. So they go outside and they see Boulder lying on the ground. They're like, hey, Boulder, what's up? Are you dead? And Boulder's like, I tried to fight Captain Cookie. I punched him so hard he flew into the wall head first, but he bounced off the wall and knocked me unconscious. So that's pretty insane that Captain Cookie was able to defeat Boulder. Let me remind you, this is the same Boulder that was able to punch Herobrine so hard that when Herobrine's body hit Lenny, it literally knocked Lenny out for like three or four episodes. That's how strong Boulder is. So strong he was able to throw the mayor on top of the jail cell when the clones attacked in episode 57. So strong that he was able to roundhouse 
Hero Brian into the wall right before he got knocked out in episode 58. This boulder is very, very strong, and Captain Cookie is easily able to bring him down, probably without even breaking a sweat. And that's pretty insane. So they proceed to go over to the jail where Lenny is being held, and it turns out that Captain Cookie is torturing Lenny by bursting him in the flames using a flint and steel because Lenny bit a guard. And it's pretty nice because Captain Cookie is showing empathy to how the guard got bit by Lenny, which is quite nice. They hear rumors from people in the village that there's a mad doctor that lives out in the area that would be able to help save jelly bean from his coma so they head out they eventually find this laboratory after walking for quite a while unfortunately the laboratory is guarded by miniature guards called laboratory guards who are villagers wearing a white lab coat and they're really small and stuff and they're kind of cute after finding their way through the laboratory guards pat and jen come up to parkour which they have to get through and they eventually get into the base but it's guarded by lava booby traps they eventually make it through and it's revealed that the villager who's running this whole thing the mad doctor is actually Dr. Treoris, OMG, that's pretty, pretty awesome, I quite enjoy that, and they say, Dr. Treoris, can you help us, can you uh, cure our friend, and he's like, uh, well, I've got lots of experiments to do, I can't do that, oh, but wait, there's, if you do one thing for me, I can help cure your friend, and uh, Pattinson don't know what to do. At the end of the episode, they decide that they're most likely going to take Dr. Treoris' task in order to save their friend. And it's left on kind of a cliffhanger right there, so we don't know what's going to happen next. And finally, this brings us to our last episode of the day, episode 61, The Fountain of Youth Missing, which I must say is probably the strangest episode of the series yet. It starts off with them accepting Treoris' task in order to save Lenny. Treora says that he used to have a wolf, and it was so sick it was cut down to the bone, basically. You could see its bones, which I think they're referring to Grimm, which in that case, they're getting all of the Grimm mythology all wrong, if that's really what they're talking about. Dr. Treoris then reveals to them that he discovered a special fountain of youth type thing in the middle of the desert made only for wolves that can heal the diseases and sicknesses of all wolves. The only problem is only wolves can enter, so he can't get to his wolf to get it home. The wolf is probably grim, but it's not really referred to at all in the episode by name, just the wolf. So they decide to go and try to get into this wolf sanctuary to try to save the wolf. I'm seeing wolf quite a lot. So they go and they see a giant wolf head made out of sandstone and sand in the middle of the desert. It's quite magnificent, I must say. And nearby is an army base. They need a key to get in there. And so they look to the army base where they find a giant skeleton dragon who fights them for quite a while. They fight and fight and fight and they defeat it. And the thing that I really like about that is that when the bone dragon dies, it suits out cakes everywhere. Which is it's pretty funny because they've been starving for the last few episodes because Honey Boo Boo's been eating their food. But the dragon dies and just explodes in cakes even though it's only made out of bones. I find that quite funny. So they go back and they use the key that they got from the bone dragon to open up the sanctuary and go inside. And what do they find inside? Well, of course, they find Captain Cookie. And they're like, Captain Cookie, how'd you get in here? And Captain Cookie's like, oh, well, I heard a wolf barking from in here. So I barked some and then the doors opened. So I went in here. And this is the worst toilet I've ever had to use. And, of course, he's referring to the Fountain of Youth, so he took a dump in the Fountain of Youth. I don't know what would happen if you took a dump in the Fountain of Youth. Would it turn back into food? Because technically that's going back in the life of food because food eventually becomes a dump when it's eaten. So that's kind of its life cycle. So technically I think it would turn it into food, which that would actually be really cool. But they're forced to get in the Fountain of Youth to look for the wolf, and eventually down a tunnel they find it. And they're like, yay, we gotta get this wolf back now. So they do something that I find quite unethical. They actually destroy the source block in the Fountain of Youth for wolves. And that got me really angry because I was like, seriously, you have a Fountain of Youth able to cure all wolves of all diseases, and you plug it? Seriously, that could have doomed the lives of thousands of wolves in the future for all you know. You're horrible people, Benjen. Oh my gosh. Uh, they get him back and they have to get him through all the obstacles because there's so many traps. They dig up a lot of dirt to get him over the lava in the wolf sanctuary and then the lava in Treoris' lab. And they get him back to Dr. Treoris. 
And Dr. Treyarch is like, thank you and stuff. And Dr. Treyarch is now going to make them the potion or whatever to cure Jellybean of his coma. And instead of giving us some closure, once again, it is a massive cliffhanger. Is Treyarch going to be able to make the coma-proof stuff for Jellybean? Is he going to fail? Are they going to get him back? Or is he going to be gone forever? We'll have to learn in the next episode. And that brings us to the end of all the episodes we'll be doing for the timeline. So let's move on to our theories. Now for the first and probably most important theory out of them all, who is the killer slash traitor? Pat and Jen have blamed a lot of people for being the possible killer, but these are some select choices. Some people think it is Evil Jen because, as explained, when they went to the hospital after Herobrine knocked them out, Evil Jen did not come with them. So people think that means she went over back to the bad side and she was the traitor slash killer all along. Now for me, I don't quite think this because, as you know, Evil Jen was back at the base. So she would probably have never been knocked out by Hero Brian since he wouldn't have been brought back by Captain Cookie. So it does provide evidence that she is not the killer, but it's definitely still open. Why didn't she go? Why did she think it was a suicide trip? It could be because she was practically created by Hero Brian and she knows his power and that going against him is fruitless and impossible or she could have been working for him the whole time it is unknown a person that they've accused a lot during this past few episodes is Chad because of how weird he's been acting but Chad always acts weird I kind of hate that cliche like the oh this guy's acting weird he's probably the bad guy trope but it kind of works because Chad is really weird. I don't really think it's him because he has no motivation to be evil that we know unless he's like completely tricking everybody who's watched The Crafting Dead. Because it seems like all he wants to do is just hang out with his family of skulls and clean them and stuff. So unless he's been putting up a false identity the entire series, there's no real point in him actually being evil. And... Also, Pat has accused Chewie of being the killer because he has been acting strange also he's been acting a little bit weirder than he has been and it seems like there's something up with him but my idea for the answer for this is the fact that he's been hanging out with chad for a quite a long time and chad may be kind of rubbing off on him and kind of making him a bit crazy because he's chad he's he's super weird but now it's time for me to throw my hat into the ring, and I think it's probably the character everybody thinks least about. Like, in the beginning of the series, very few people expected Valentine to be the original killer, even if he was being hypnotized. Same for Bob. Nobody expected Bob to come back from the dead to be evil, and much less the fact that it was a Bob clone. And nobody expected Herobrine to be the true killer, the leader of them all. So when you really think about it, it's who was they expecting least to turn against them? And I have to say, Carter. Now, every time they talk about the killer, there's one thing in common. Jen always says, oh, but it can't be Carter. Carter's too nice. And Pat always agrees with her. It would make sense because a lot of the times it's the person you'd least expect to go over to the enemy side. Like, my case example would have to be Haas. Now, Haas, you would not expect for him to go to the dark side because he's one of the leading members of the Resistance, or at least he was. He helped more than just about anybody to stop Hero Brian. He stopped the mind control dust. He stopped a lot of plans that Hero Brian had. So he's one of the most powerful people in the Resistance. So you'd think, why would he go over to Hero Brian's side? But it's because he says that Hero Brian is the more powerful side and it's better to be on the winning side. So you did not really see that coming because you don't expect the vi the near victor to go to the other side because he thinks he'll eventually lose. So it could work because Carter, he's always super happy and he's always a really good guy. So it could be that he's putting that all up as a trick to trick Pat and Jen and really he has been the killer the whole time. And for my second theory, I would have to say, like I've said in every previous video except maybe the first one, I think there needs to be an evil Pat. It would make sense if there's an evil Jin out there, and it would make sense if there's an evil Pat, and maybe he's like the exact opposite of Pat, where he, a normal Jin is kind of wonky, derpy and stuff. Evil Jin is very calm, collective, and intelligent. Maybe Pat, where Pat is athletic and strong and just goes on, won't give up. <laughs> Maybe Evil Pat's just fat, lazy, and gives up almost instantly. 
<laughs> that would be really funny because they'd be complete opposites. But another main theory is who I think's going to die next on the villain side. I think the next person to die out of the villains is going to be Dr. Haas. Because I think Dr. Haas has served his time on the series and his death is very soon. He's already been replaced with Dr. Payne. Now, there's been many villains who have been good and redeemed themselves after turning evil. Like, for example, there was Bob. Bob, at the beginning of the series, he was never super established, but he was always talked about as, like, a hero. He always saved everybody. And it was a huge shock when it was revealed that Bob was actually one of uh, the main villains in the series. And they thought he'd kill them, but he came back quite a few times until eventually he turned back good. And it was a good story of redemption because he was shown to have been a really good guy who went bad but went back to being good. Now, Dr. Haas... He's always been moderately good, but he's never been, like, super in action of the scene. Like, Bob was practically a legend. Haas is still just Haas. So it wouldn't make sense for him to have a whole revival story, like a redemption story of him turning back good. So I think he might be next to die in the series because he's been pretty much replaced with Dr. Payne. Dr. Payne can do anything Dr. Haas does. So I think he's pretty much doomed. And as the same as I've said in the last episode, I think Herobrine is soon to die. I thought that Herobrine was going to die in those last few episodes, but Herobrine defeated them. But I think as Herobrine's eventually going to get defeated, and the new villain, as I said last time, is going to be Lenny. Lenny is by far much more evil and malicious than Herobrine has ever been. And I think Lenny would be an amazing successor to Herobrine. When Herobrine first came on the scene, I was kind of disappointed because it felt like kind of a cop-out. Not an original character, just stealing a popular Minecraft character. But I think if Lenny takes over, it would make it really good because it would be like, Herobrine, puh. He was just a little weakling. I am Lenny, the evilest NBC ever. ha 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 ha. Because if Lenny had the powers of Herobrine, we would all be in danger. Oh my gosh, Lenny is, uh, he's a monster. So I think he will end up succeeding Herobrine as a villain. And for the final theory of the night, I must ask, who is on the chopping block out of the good guys? So who do I think is going to die? So I think Allie is a perfect candidate for someone who's going to die because she has almost no character depth. And she seems like someone who's probably going to end up dying very soon in the series. She does not seem to have much fan support or anything. She's a pretty bland character. And out of all the main characters, I hate to say it, but the disguised man might be on the chopping block because when it comes to the disguised man, he was an extremely important part of the beginning of the series. At the beginning of the series, he was by far my favorite character of them all. But he's been reduced to, like, the only reason he exists is to feed Honey Boo Boo and care for her. Other than that, there's no point in the disguised man at all. So I think he might be on the chopping board for death. But when it comes down to it, I doubt many of the main characters are going to die or be created anymore because when the series began, they had a hard time getting all the correct characters. We've had screw-ups like Crazy, the Troll, and Skittles, and we've had all the great characters we have. And the deaths were mostly just to weed out the less than amazing characters. And at this point, we've almost gotten to pure perfection of what characters they have. Almost all the bad characters have been weeded out. I'm talking about you, Mayor. You gotta die. You're a horrible character. Uh, but I think that they will not kill so many characters off anymore because they've almost got the perfect cast of characters. So the disguised man is kind of unlikely because he's such an established part. He's been there since episode one, I believe. It's been pretty freaking insane if he died. It would be extremely tragic. But that's really all I have to say on that topic and all the theories that I have to say for today. So I hope you enjoyed this. What theories do you have? What do you think is going to be happening in the future of popular MMOs, The Crafting Dead? I can't wait for the next episode. These are some of my favorite videos to create. Because I just love theorizing about these internet shows. I gotta find more to theorize on. But what do you think of these episodes? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Do you agree with me that the Fountain of Youth mission was very, very weird? <laughs> the weirdest episode yet, in my opinion. What theories do you have? I'm just repeating stuff over and over again. So until next time, I'm Axel from Axel Entertainment. And goodbye. Oh, <laughs> oh,